Hi everyone, this is Leah. I am the author and illustrator of a webcomic called Beneath the Camphor Tree and a modern version of that comic that so far is only living on Patreon called The Chable's Bodyguard and it is sort of a modern, modern version of Beneath the Camphor Tree and it's just a fun little project I'm working on. But I thought I would use the first episode of the prologue for that story, the modern version, for an example of what I, um, what my process is of making an episode from start to finish. And at first, first things first, I want to apologize for the fact that so far this video is not scripted. I did try to make this video um, a couple weeks ago, and it was so scripted, and it was so like too organized that it ended up I felt like it was so boring I just scrapped it halfway through and so hopefully this version is a little organized but not so organized that it is boring and I just want to go over some things that I do um, the steps that I take to make my comic so I'm gonna put on the screen now the steps that I generally take every single episode from start to finish to make my to make each episode um, so the first thing I do is I start with a script and I actually don't have, I don't know where it is or if I even made one for this episode. I don't have a script for this episode. So I'm just bringing up the season one, episode one of Beneath the Camphor Tree script, just so you can see. And please excuse how cringe, how cringe it is. But, um, this is basically, I use Notion. Notion is an app, um, it's like an organization app. I don't really know what the official term is, but basically I just write it out, divide things by panel. Since I am also the artist, I can visualize what I'm writing. So I don't have to write too many descriptions unless I'm like, oh, I need to make sure I am uh, remembering what I want to do. But for the most part, I just write dialogue. I write a basic description if need be to trigger a thought or a memory of what I wanted for that panel. But for the most part, my scripts are pretty simple. And then I move on to the thumbnailing stage, which um, I will put on the screen now, the thumbnailing process that I recorded for this episode, the prologue episode one of the modern comic. And yeah, so basically I use a, and I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, I'm sure, but I use the thumbnailing template based off of Walter Osley's video, thumbnailing video and I will link that below. And yeah, basically when I thumbnail, and I'm not even looking at it right now, so I have no idea what's going on on the screen. But when I thumbnail, I just think about the script, I think about pacing, and I think about um, being able to, like the flow, the flow. And so those are the most important things when thumbnailing. It's not making a pretty picture or it's not even making something that's readable because I will know what I'm drawing. I don't have to present it the stage to someone and make sure they understand what is, you know, like an artist is understanding what I want. It's or a writer or something. I just need it to make sure I know what I'm going for, the camera angle, the flow, the pacing, etc. And I will make maybe a future video on how I determine pacing and flow because that's very important for vertical scrolling comics. And so after I'm done with the prologue, I insert the file, the, I insert the, um, the art of the thumbnail into a webtoon. What's the word I'm looking for? This is why you should script videos. <laughs> The word I'm looking for is the webtoon file format for Clip Studio Paint. I'm using Clip Studio Paint EX and basically like in this episode there are five panels as you can see here or five pages I should say and I basically um, I'll make a video more in depth on how I, when I make a video more in depth of how I thumbnail I'll go more into how I like set up a file but basically I set up the file and here let me show you um, the first one. So we'll just use this one as an example. Actually, this one's not a great one to use as an example. I'll use, well, now my computer's slow because I will use um, the second one as an example. Um, 
just waiting for it to load. Here we go. So as you can see, I divide, I should have cleaned these up beforehand. I divide my file format into, and I'll put a little it bigger on the screen so you can see it. But I divide each page up into four sections. There's speech bubbles or dialogue, sketches, which includes the thumbnails, the panels, which is the final art, and then lastly, um, the 3D plus assets. And that's just where I store 3D um, art or 3D assets that I use to help make the drawing process faster. And so um, let's start with hiding these, opening this. Let's just open up thumbnails. So as you can see, whoops, it's much too light. Make that darker. So as you can see, this is page two and I've just inserted the thumbnails directly in. Now there's no dialogue, so maybe I should put the dialogue on. And so the thumbnails, as you can see up close, are really just cues for me to understand camera angle, and like as far as the art goes, camera angle and basic expression. It's it's not even that detail. They're just stick figures. It's really basic. And um, then I add on top of that, the next thing that I do, actually the next thing that I do is not even sketches. I used to create the sketches next after the thumbnails. And then I realized I kept having to correct things when I would do the backgrounds because I you know, the characters fit into the background. The background does not always fit onto the character. And so once I put the backgrounds in, I kept having to correct the character sketches. And because I use 3D backgrounds for my backgrounds. And so um, because of that, I just, it was so much work to have to correct the characters to make sure they match the perspective. But the next thing that I did after, um, let's see bring back the final art. The next thing that I did after thumbnails, now what I do is I do the background. So this first panel, this is this one, right? Yeah. I basically, let's just hide all this. I add the background. And as you can see, I use, well, this one's blurred. So it's, um, so it is rasterized, but spoiler for my background video, I use file objects to insert backgrounds into my comic because that way um, I don't have to worry about. Uh, well, it's it's just it's complicated. It's not really even complicated. It simplifies things for me. But I will go into more detail during the background video. Anyway, this is the background that it looks like in this panel. And what I do is once I've inserted all the backgrounds into every single panel and I like to work in order, like each panel in order of when you see it, when you scroll through. And I also like to work on each step fully before I move on to the next. I know not everyone likes to do that, everyone to each their own. Um, but for me, I like to work one step at a time in order of when it appears when you scroll through it. So um, once I'm done with this part, um, inserting the backgrounds into the comic and finishing all the background art. I like to um, lower the opacity of the background so I can still see kind of what's going on and the perspective and everything like that, but it's not obscuring anything. And then I work on um, working on the sketches. And let me just, actually, I'm just gonna hide the panel so you can look at all the sketches or not hide them, sorry, I'm just gonna minimize them. Actually, no, I will hide them because you can't see it. So these are the sketches and I like to do pretty detailed sketches. They look like how the line art will look, just a little, you know, with a pencil brush with, um, and some of this you can't really tell what's going on because the art, some the art is not finished, but um, it's basically very detailed because I just like to make sure. All right, so here's how I think of it. The more detailed my sketch is, the better my line art is. The more I leave up to the line art stage to figure out what's going on, the worse it's going to look. And that's just for me, that's just how I work. But I like to put a lot of time, a lot of time into the sketches so that I know the line art. I don't have to think that much. I just have to make sure I'm basically like tracing the sketches. It's, it's simple, it takes a while because you have to be detailed, but it just like, 
it's the drawing. Make sure you're spending time in the sketch stage and the drawing stage so that when you go to the line art, you're not having to make stuff up as you go. So then I do the sketches and then going back to this panel, I do the line art. So where's the line art? Here's the line art. That is not very, oh, it's because I'm, all right. So there's the line art and I'm gonna take away that. So that's what the line art looks. And I like to use a brush, where is it? Oh, uh, here, these brushes, I'll try to link them below. I found them through Case Hill. They have a really cool, they use those brush, those paint brushes. And I started using them after watching one of um, their videos. Have never gone back since, it's awesome. It's like a fill, fill tool. Uh, and you just trace, trace it and it fills it automatically. And so when I um, do the line art, I also do the flats at the same time. And I'm sorry, I'm saying I'm um, so many times, it's hard to come up with what to say on the spot. And then I do flat layers. Now in future episodes, I ended up creating these like layer auction, auto action uh, settings so that I don't have to think about, like I, it comes up with the name for me so I can find it easily. Probably should have used an episode with one of those that uses those, but I wanted to use this one because it's already posted publicly and you can go read it if you want to. Um, but I think this is the color. Yeah, so then I do flat colors after line art and flats. So flats is not the same in my head as flat colors. Flats just creates like the base for the colors. Um, and that's something I've done for a long time with digital art. And then I do flat colors, as I said, let's just go on up. I do, um, after I'm done with flat colors, I do something called embellishments stage or extra stage is what I call it. That's probably what I called it in that little list I made. And so I do things like add the little nose highlight right here. Can't really see it, this guy's pretty pale. And then I add, um, no, not shading, sorry. Normally this is the stage I add like blush and uh, freckles, if they had freckles or patterns on clothing. It's just like, it's the embellishment stage. It's the stage I add the stuff that makes the characters come more alive and be more unique. Um, then I do state, um, sorry, then I do shading. And this takes a while, but I'm pretty messy with shading. I don't really care too much if it looks nice. Then I do, shading also is like, you know, highlights and stuff. And also in shading, I do a little eye reflection, which I love doing. And then I'm pretty much done. And, and by this point, I've, you know, turned the opacity up, of course, so I can match the shading color and everything. I'm pretty much done at that point. And once I'm done with the shading, I, and again, I go through each stage completely before I move on to the next. So I finish the shading stage before I go on to making sure everything looks good. I finish the sketch stage before I move on to the line arts. Um, and I do that for the entire episode, each stage, one like fully before I move on to the next step. And that's just so that, I know it's just how my brain works and I can turn that off. And yeah, and if you just wanna see, um, let's see, do I have anything? No, I don't even have any 3D assets on this page. Uh, I didn't use it for this page, but that is that episode. And so you can see, I'll go more into my tools. If you have any questions on what tools I use, again, this is a super short video. I don't even know how long it is. Oh, 15, 14 minutes. Yeah, I guess not that short. And hopefully it wasn't too rambly. I just wanted to record it real quick. I'm really busy this week, so I didn't have time to, I also didn't have time to like create this mega video on it but hopefully this is not too chill and relaxed. Hopefully it is not too obnoxious to listen to. But anyway, that is how I make an episode. And if I will put links below on where you can go read this particular episode. Uh, and if you wanna keep reading it, you can join my Patreon and read it there. But anyway, um, yeah, that is how I make an episode from start to finish. I will make, I think my next video is gonna be on 3D backgrounds, but that one, it might not be my next next video because it takes a bit of like I want that one to be a bit more professional made uh, like a little more work put into it 
and also I want to make sure I have all like good resources and stuff because that's a little more in depth so because of that that video might be like one or two out but yeah so that's my process from start to finish hope you enjoyed thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time goodbye